Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Cania. Today we're going to be taking a look at leucistic bird plumage. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be looking at leucistic bird plumage. Several times a year, I get this question. I've got this strange looking bird in my yard. Can you tell me what it is? And this can happen at any time during the year, uh, usually several times a year, I'll get that, that question. And um, it can be birds that have an abnormal uh, uh, feather plumage and it's uh, usually the result of something like a genetic condition called leucism. In this case, it's an American robin and you can see there are features that tell us it's a robin. You can see that red breast and the bill color and shape is correct for robin. And most of the plumage on the back is pretty much uh, robin-like. So uh, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch to figure out that this is a robin. Uh, leucism is an abnormal plumage condition and it's caused by a genetic mutation that prevents the pigment from actually getting into the bird's feathers. And this can take on a variety of forms. In some cases, you'll have a bird that's completely white where all the feathers are affected. Sometimes you have only some feathers affected, uh, but quite often when that does happen, they do appear to be affected in a symmetrical format. So birds that you have affect, or feathers that you have affected on the right-hand side of the bird will also be uh, affected on the left-hand side. Uh, so you get kind of a blotchy effect like this robin that we're looking at. And then the third type of situation would be where some of the pigment is getting through to the feathers, but it's not quite right. Instead of uh, being the, the correct coloration, uh, the bird looks more or less frosted or ghostly in color. Uh, so some of the colors gets through, you can kind of get a feel for what the color of the bird should be, but it's just not quite right. It's, it does have that kind of frosted look about it. So you might wonder what the difference is between leucism and albinism. And in the case of albinos, not only are all the feathers white, but the, uh, the skin color would be affected. Uh, it should be pink on an albino. And you can see that in the case of the, uh, the feet that are showing here, you can see that those are pink. And the, uh, the bill would be very pale and you can see that that's happening. And the eye color would be kind of pinkish or reddish. And we can see that that's happening as well. So this is a true albino uh, here on the right. And um, this is what a normally uh, colored uh, ruby-throated hummingbird would look like. So quite different, obviously. Uh, if this was an, a leucistic bird, and let's say we had some white blotches in here somewhere, it would still retain the dark feet. It would still have that dark bill and the eye color would be um, you know, still dark like you see here. So um, those features besides the feathers would still be intact. So that would be the, the difference. Um, when a bird does uh, have an al albinistic uh, appearance, it's, because it's triggered by a problem with enzymes and that enzyme is called tyrosinase. And it leads to a problem in making the melanin, which is what gives, uh, puts the pigment into the, into the skin, into the feathers, and, and, the, and affects the eye color. So uh, it, it's a little bit different of a situation than what we have with leucistic birds, where it's actually a genetic feature. In this case, it's, the, uh, it's an en enzyme feature that's causing the, uh, the effect. So leucism can appear in several different forms. And I, I did mention this already. Sometimes you'll have birds that are all white like this example of this great horned owl here. And sometimes it would be very blotchy, but symmetrical. And you do see that in this rose-breasted grosbeak. So feathers that are being affected on this side in the wing, you can see are being affected on this side as well. And pretty much there's some symmetry in how the, the head pattern is being affected as well. And then here's our third example, that, that kind of frosted look or ghostly look. So the, the plumage coloration is kind of there. It's just not as uh, dark as we would normally expect. And so it does have kind of that, that frosted quality. You can see that in the breast here, in the undertail coverts and kind of in the part of the face here. So it just has that little bit of a frosted look about it. And leucism uh, plays no favorites in regards to families. You can see that uh, this mallard here uh, is a leucistic bird. And you can see there's a lot of white here, a lot of white in the head. Uh, you can see that the speculum is the, is correct for mallard, so so that's kind of a dead giveaway there. Uh, in the case of this uh, hummingbird, you can see that uh, you know the white has really taken over most of the body plumage. Uh, on the back here, it kind of has that frosted look, 
that uh, I was describing earlier. And uh, I wouldn't know that this is an Allen's hummingbird, but uh, the photographer has it labeled as that. So uh, we're gonna go with Allen's for that. Uh, here's this fox sparrow, has that blotchy effect that we talked about. And again, there's some symmetry involved in that. So uh, you do have a lot of features here that tell you it's a fox sparrow, but um, all that blotchiness uh, kind of throws you a little bit of a curve. Same thing with this common grackle. Uh, here we have an all white head. Uh, and then the rest of the body, you do get kind of that blotchy effect. And what you see happening in this wing here is probably happening on the other side. And in fact, you can see a bit of the primary showing here and they are white, just like the tips of these primaries here. Here's that great horned owl again. This time he does actually have his eyes open a little bit. So you can see that the eye color is yellow. So we know it's not an albino. Um, it is, you know, uh, a leucistic bird. And in the case of this yellow rumped warbler, you can see that we have a lot of white going on here in the face, kind of a frosted effect going on on the underparts here. Uh, so kind of a combination of, of effects of leucism for this bird. Some species will retain enough of their plumage, as we've already seen, uh, so that you can still make an easy identification. If you were to come across this bird here, you, your first instinct would be to call it a, a black capped chickadee. You might not even initially notice that the tail is all white. But once you do, it kind of does give it a smart look to it. Uh, it just is you know, a classier looking or different. I guess it's the fact that it's different makes it look kind of special. So um, I did run into a bird, a chickadee like this one time in uh, McDowell Grove. And so they do appear every now and then, but uh, certainly not, not common or to be expected. In the case of this American robin, there's not a lot of uh, leucism going on. You know, you have just a little bit here and some in the face. There's certainly plenty of characteristics to tell us it's an American robin. The, the back color, uh, aside from the white here, the, the rest of the head color is, is just right for a male robin. And you can see that the bill shape and color is correct. And you do have that reddish breast. So lots of clues to tell us who that bird is. Sometimes uh, you might have some difficulty telling what bird you're looking at. Uh, these two examples here aren't too confusing, but let's say that you know this, this bird here, if it didn't have this uh, little black collar going on here, uh, you might wonder what that bird is. But if you see it hanging around with blue jays, you know, it's kind of a clue as to you know, what this species is. So you, know, if they're, you can sometimes tell by the company they keep. Same thing with these uh, mallards. Uh, offhand, you'd probably be able to guess that that was a mallard, but it, you kind of cinch the deal when you see it hanging around with a male mallard. Uh, certainly the bill color is correct for a female mallard, uh, and that speculum again is correct for female mallard. So uh, just by association, uh, that would be a big clue as to who you're looking at. So some key points to, to remember. Uh, when you can't find a mysterious bird in your field guide, consider the fact that it might be leucism. Uh, as, your, as a possible answer. And many leucistic birds retain enough of their correct plumage to aid in identification. Sometimes it's helpful to observe who the mystery bird is keeping company with. All white birds are not necessarily albinos. They could be leucistic. If it is a true albino, then uh, that lack of plumage would extend beyond the feathers and would include the bill and the skin and the eye color would be pink or reddish. Then you would have a true albino. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought, and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.